exhausted and disappointed with allies. Ukraine's president and military chief warned of a long attrition of war. President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky during a meeting with the Secretary General of NATO Jens Stoltenberg on September 28, 2023 in Kiev, Ukraine. CNN Two articles published this week give a stark assessment of Ukraine's prospect in each war with Russia. One by the commander in chief of Ukrainian military admits the battlefield has reached the stalemate and a long attrition of war benefiting Moscow backers. The other portrait Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky are exhausted by the constant efforts to casual and persuade the allies to keep the faith. Ukraine's military chief General Valery Chalugini says in a long essay and interview with the economist that just like it First World War, we have reached the level of technology that puts us into a stalemate. He ad- acknowledges that there will most likely be no deep and beautiful breakthrough, but instead an equilibrium of devastating losses and destruction. At the same time, in an interview with the Times, Simon Schuster. Zelensky said that nobody believes in our victory like I do. Nobody. But he adds that instilling those be- belief in Ukraine's allies takes all your power, your energy. Schuster, who has long had access to the president's inner circle, portrays Zelensky as a tired and sometimes irritable and anxious and ally, that ally, the commitment is very waning. Ex- exertion with the world rolls along like a wave. You see in the United States, in Europe, Zelensky is quoted as saying, but Zelensky is fixate, fixated with the victory and one the count, countenance a truce or negotiations. For us, it would mean leaving this wound, wound open for future generation, he tells Time. Five months after Ukraine launched its much-anticipated counter-offensive, Zelensky's fears and Jalutini's assessment come as the world's focus shift to the Middle East and the risk that Israel's war with Hamas might spill over into the broader regional conflict. Commander-in-Chief of Armed Forces of Ukraine, Valery Zaluzhny, during the event dedicated to Ukraine's Independence Day on August 24th in Kiev, Ukraine. On August 24th, Ukraine celebrates its 1991 Declaration of Independence from the USSR. Zelensky himself about acknowledges to time, of course we lose out from the event in the Middle East. People are dying and the world's help is needed there to save lives. Stalemate on the front. Ukrainian forces have taken just a silver of land since the summer. Russia still occupies nearly one-fifth of the country in some areas such as around the Av- Avdivika and Puhuledar in Donetsk and near Kupi- Kupiansk in Kalikip, in the Ukrainians are on the defensive as Russia pours munitions and men into the bat- battle. Zaluzhny tells an economist that the Kremlin is uh, oblivious to the huge losses sustained by the Russian mil- army. Well over 100,000 men, according to many estimates. In the last few days, Ukrainian Defense Minister Rustem Melov says Russia has lost 4,000 men around the Avd- Avdivika alone. Open source imagery suggests the Russians may have lost up to 200 tanks and other vehicles in the pil- battle. Zaluzhny seems almost puzzled that the arsenal supplied to Ukraine 
by each Western allies and the mobilization of several more brigades has made so little difference. Changing commanders and moving divisions have had no impact, he said. Four months should have been enough time for us to have reached the Crimea, to have fought in Crimea, to return from Crimea, and to have gone back in and out again, he adds. Instead, deep and well enriched in trenchant Russian defenses have been impossible to penetrate. Even where dense minefields are penetrated, often at great cost, the Russians re restore them through remote mining line. line. Ukrainians' inferiority in the air has dimmed. Demide advances on the ground, and Jalusini warns that at the end of 2023, Russia may deploy new attack squadrons. The commander in chief says that at one point he turned to the unordered Soviet analysis of the First World War entitled Breaching Fortified Defense Lines. The similarities with the today are striking, he notes. I realize that is exactly where we are, because just like then, the level of our technological development today has put both us and our enemies in the stupor. The use of drones and other reconnaissance technology is at the heart of the stalemate. Jalutini talks about the Carnegie unfolding around the Avdivika as Russia throws throws dozens of tanks into taking a few hundred meters. The simple fact is that we see everything the enemy is doing and we see everything we are they see everything we are doing. <clears throat> At the same time he acknowledges that the Russian military has relent and adapted. Uh, it has improved the logistics chains factories and churning out the new hardware and its electronic warf warfare capabilities have blunted the Ukraine's edge in presi precision munitions. Jalusini can candidly admits that Russia will maintain an advantage in armament, equipment, rockets, and ammunition for some time. He has the wish list. Ukraine's military chief says it will take a qualitative leap to break the remorseless war of attrition that has set in just as winter begins to bite. That brutal recognition can only wear down Ukrainian morale, and not just on the battlefield. Ukrainian civilians will face another cold, dark winter if Russia renews its targeting of enemy energy infrastructure. In his essay, Jalusny lists five major requirements for progress, none of them quick fixes, and all of them demanding renewed commitment from allies. They include gaining air superiority to support ground operations, breaching Russia mine barriers, increasing the effectiveness of counter-battery combat, targeting Russian artillery, for example, creating and training the necessary reserves, and building up electronic warfare capabilities. He says that Ukraine must deliver massive strikes in the single combat formation using convoy decoys and combat drones to overload the Russian air defense systems. We also need electronic warfare systems, which are key to winning the drone warfare, he not, adding that the Russians have about 60 different systems. The sun set over the destroyed building in Izilum, Ukraine. This war cannot be won with the weapons of a past generation and outdated method, Jal Jalutini told the economist. Sooner or later, we are going to find that we simply don't have enough people to fight. We have limited the capabilities to train reserves on our own territory since the enemy has the ability to launch missiles and airstrikes on training centers and training grounds. 
The Kremlin, by contrast, seems grimly satisfied by the scale, making the belief that ultimately each larger military machine will break Ukrainian morale. Responding to Jalutsny's comment, spokesman Dmitry Peskov said Thursday that Russia constantly continues to conduct the special military operation. All goals that are set must be achieved. Moscow is also likely re- releasing shifting sentiment in the U.S. in both the Congress and among the public. According to the new Gallup poll, 41% of Americans say the U.S. is doing too much to help Ukraine, up from 29% just five months ago. That figure rises to 55% among Republicans, according to the poll, as the 2024 election looms. The paralysis on Capitol Hill has also interrupted the flow of military aid to Ukraine. The Biden administration's effort to link a year's worth of aid, $24 billion, to other funding priorities, such as aid to Israel, have run into strong headwinds among Republicans in Congress. Several Republican senators have now said that Jalutny's remark called into question Ukraine's strategy in the war. One who has opposed the further aid to Ukraine, Senator J.D. Benz, said Thursday, this was always going to end with Russia controlling some Ukrainian territory and negotiating the settlement. Speaking of his latest visit to Washington in September, Zelensky tells Time that some members of Congress asked me straight up, if you don't go, if you if we don't give you the ad, what happens? What happens is we will lose. Zelensky and other Ukrainian officials have consistently warned that the volume and type of ad coming from Western allies as well as what they see as demanding de- delays in each arrival has enabled enable the Ukraine to stay in the fight but not to prevail. Sh- Schuster quote an aide to the Ukrainian president to say as saying Zelensky feels betrayed by his Western allies. They have left him without the means to win the war, only the means to survive it. Only now are US made the uh, attempts a longer range tactical missile being brought to be bear against the targets far behind the front lines. F-16 fighter jet will not be deployed until next spring at the earliest. To many Ukrainian officials, this restricted pipeline pipeline has allowed Russia to stabilize the situation which a year ago threatened to unravel. In the aftermath of the sudden Ukrainian advance through Kharkiv and the Russian withdrawal from much of Kherson, if the Russians have the Archilis Hill, Jalutsny believes that it is Crimea. That is partly because it is jewel in President Vladimir Putin's crown, and partly because the peninsula is an important channel for resupplying Russian troops as well as the home of its Black Sea fleet. Over the past few months, the Ukrainian military has stepped up missile drone and supported attacks against Russia's defense infrastructure in Crimea, as well as Putin surprised the breach to Russia. Jalutsny says that for the first time, a thump was used against the target in Crimea this week, but its land forces remain many miles from the peninsula. For now, Jalutsny's greatest fear is a prolonged trench warfare against an enemy with three times the number of men under arms. The biggest risk of the attrition trench war is that we it can drag on for years and wear down the Ukrainian state, he says. Jalutsny describes the Russia as the feudal state where the cheapest resource is human life and for us the most expensive thing we have is our people.